All right, welcome to episode 86 of the At Bad Podcast presented by War Media, where we give you our thoughts on the latest Chicago baseball news, as well as take a trip around the league. I am Saul Rodriguez, joined as always by my co-host, Miles Porter. How we doing, Miles? How we doing, man? Hey, we're doing good. The season is upon us, man. That was, sure. that was uh, quite the opener that we had uh, this morning. Dude, are you four, <laughs> four pitch clock violations? Are you kidding me? Holy, <laughs> holy. We're getting right back into it. I, I also got MLB the show, hence the hat. Yes, I yeah. I haven't got called oh, yeah. pitch clock violations yet. And so <laughs> that, 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 that makes me feel kind of good about myself. Makes me feel like I'm ready for the league. Um, but yeah, man, doing, doing good. I'm happy. I'm happy it's opening day. Hell yeah, man! And it's 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 just a weird feeling, right? Where it's like it's it's opening day, but like not really, but it is, but not really, because like your team's right, not playing, yeah. but you know, but no, yeah, it was it was definitely. Um, uh, I, I will say, and, and for me, I I was fortunate enough not to work today, so I had I was like being able to stay up for that game and and watch that. It was it was definitely. I wish it was a little. I wish it was either later or earlier. Like I, I for me, I'm a night owl, so like two a.m. would have been nice or whatever. But even then. <laughs> A uh, crazy time and just uh but regardless really cool to see that happen and just uh, uh a great battle between two of the best teams in the west and and in the nl Absolutely. so it was good to see and, and we'll definitely delve into the soul series what you know what, what it means for baseball as well as other stuff because you know we, we before we started recording obviously talking about um the breaking news as we sit here on wednesday the the 20th of march um, of course, Ipe, the uh, translator for uh, Shohei Otani, has been fired from the Dodgers, um, and it has to do a little bit with uh, gambling, uh, I guess. Uh, Otani might have been a victim of, of theft, but okay, again, nobody knows all the details of this just yet either. I know Jeff Passan uh, tweeted out uh, a, a lengthy passage of, of what the information that they do know, but we'll talk yeah. about it a little bit, what it could mean, whatever, uh, of the stuff that we do know. Um, of course, we talk about, you know, Blake Snell going to the Giants as one of the bigger free agent news. Um, but of course, like always, we start in Chicago because, you know, the Cubs and the White Sox, uh, even if both teams head in different directions, there's still, uh, you know, big news on each team all the time, especially, you know, with the White Sox. Yeah. Uh, we haven't, you know, we haven't recorded since, you know, the Dylan C trade. So we'll talk about that on the north side. Of course, Justin Steele was named, you know, opening day starter. Sammy Sosa was in town. Um, and there's some injuries too. So, um, but like I said, we'll start with the White Sox and that was the, the bigger deal, uh, that we've seen is, and, and we, we literally, I feel like, you know, it's one of the, those topics just like, you know, with, with, uh, um, football and Justin, uh, Justin Fields and, and, and Caleb Williams, like that conversation, like this is something we've been talking about, like all off season long, even into spring training of like, where's Dylan T's going? Uh, you know, what are the yeah. White Sox going to get? And I'll tell you one thing. I, I, as much as Gabe, I know Gabe for sure mentioned the Padres too as a, as a landing spot for Cease. Not what I expected, neither the return that I was expecting either. I thought eventually the White Sox were going to get less than what they wanted, apparently. But they got exactly, I feel like, what they wanted, even maybe even better, so some, some might say. I know White Sox fans might say different because I was looking online. A lot of them were not satisfied with the return. Uh, the White Sox yeah. received Dylan Cease, or the Padres, excuse me, received Dylan Cease. The White Sox received... Uh, right-handed pitcher Drew Thorpe, who they got from the Yankees in the Juan Soto deal. Um, they yeah. also get uh, Samuel Zavala. Um, they also get right-handed pitcher Jairo uh, Iriarte. Uh, he's, uh, and then they also get right-handed pitcher Stephen Wilson. So those are three uh, of the Padres' top 10 prospects, which, again, I think it was one of those things where the Padres were one of the only teams willing to do that. I'm sure a lot of teams didn't. But the Padres are uh, uh, well-known around the league to you know for producing uh you know talented prospects i mean in the starting lineup today jackson merrill we saw him having having some great at bats yeah. against glass now yeah. but yeah what were what were your initial um reactions to this trade because you know uh a lot of people were surprised that it was a project i think a lot of people thought it was going to be the you know either the orioles or whether it be the yankees i think was we're getting some of the traction too the rangers too um what were your initial reactions on dylan cease getting traded to the padres you know, I, I think the White Sox won with this. I really love the young talent that they got, um, you know, in, in return when it, when it comes to that. And so I, I think I think for White Sox fans, I think there is a little bit of like a, uh, a frustration. There's a bit of a sting there. I, Sox fans really enjoyed watching Dylan Cease go out there and compete every single day. Um, but uh, the, the Padres know that they don't really have much in, in terms of uh, what they got at the MLB level. Now, granted, I'm not taking away from anyone that they have, but they, they did lose Blake Snell. They did lose 
um, Juan Soto, and they are kind of a bottom of the barrel looking kind of team in that division. There are a hand, handful of people who look at the Padres and, and think that they're going to make some noise. I'm not in that group. I'm definitely with the majority saying I don't think the Padres are a playoff team. Does this give them a little bit of an edge in terms of being able to compete? Yeah, but I but you know <laughs> it, it was a little bit of a desperation move, and I think the White Sox. Uh, really came out on top of that. You give away, would you say, three of their top ten prospects? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dude. Dude, oh, my God. <laughs> that's, that's oh, my, if, 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 if I'm a diehard Sox fan in terms of understanding how baseball works, I would actually be very optimistic right now because now mm-hmm. you have that much more healthy of a farm system. Um, it, it, this is going to take time. This is going to be years in the making. Um, but I'm hoping that this does work out positive for the White Sox. Yeah, no, no, I, I'm right with you. I mean, like, it's one of those things where I was looking at it and I was like, this is a, like, at first it was like the return was taking a while for it to come out and where pe- people are like, oh, is it just going to be Drew Thorpe? Because it was Drew Thorpe and I think so, um, uh, Drew Thorpe and, and Iriarte, who were the, the ones that they mentioned first, but then they announced, you know, Samuel Zavala as well. Um, and they had uh, Stephen Wilson, who's a talented right-handed pitcher, you know, came out of the bullpen, had a, a mid three ZRA. But yeah, like it it's a good return for how long they waited. And I think they waited and they got the right deal. And I think that's, that's, you know, the, the best part um, from, you know, from a neutral standpoint. Yeah. And of course, you know, the White Sox, obviously, you know, not only are they, is it sad because you, once again, you know what it means, you know what the deal means, right. It pushes you back. It yeah. continues to push you back. Um, and, yeah. and does, you know, it doesn't mean you'll have a winner anytime soon. So I think that's why, but then also the fact that like, I think they were also imagining themselves getting a deal with done with the Orioles or the Yankees. And the, the, the reason why, and, and not, not, not to, um, in, in no way negatively towards the Padres, the Padres still have a top five, uh, uh prospect pool, but yeah. you know, the, the Yankees obviously have Dominguez, you know, the, the, the Orioles of yeah. uh, have, have Kierstead, they have, you know, not that they were going to trade Jackson holiday, but you know what I mean? They have like that, that type of, of, yeah. uh, of, of loaded prospect pool. So yeah, I think that's why, you know, it was kind of like, it was one of those things where it's like, I was kind of just thinking to myself, well, beggars can't be choosers. You gotta have, you gotta eventually just land with what you, what you can get. Um, and what that's you so- can get is still a good deal because those are, you know, talented yeah. and touted prospects. Cause even Drew Thorpe, like I said, you know, th- that was a guy that headlined the, the Juan Soto deal. Um, you know, that and he didn't even, you know, play a game in the Padres uniform. So uh, obviously that right. was one guy that I'm sure the White Sox, you know, really wanted. Um, and I th- he's going to be probably the first one to make appearance in the major leagues, you know, sooner rather than later, because he, he's one of the more talented right-handed pitchers in the minor league system. So um, that, yeah, it's one of those things that I think it is exciting for a White Sox from a White Sox perspective of like, you got younger players, you got players of the future, but of course it's not, you know, this year, uh, they're not going to impact this year's roster one bit. Uh, right. But, you know, yeah. g- going to, to to players that are going to impact this year's roster, they, meant they you know, announced, uh, Pedro Grifol announced that G- uh, Garrett Crochet will be the opening day starter. Um, now we have two lefties in Chicago starting uh, opening day for their respective baseball teams. What are, what are your thoughts on the choice of Garrett Crochet? Because they could have gone multiple ways. I mean, they, they've obviously added, um, you know, uh, um, uh, plenty of of guys, uh, you know, like Soroka and Fetty and all that. So, what were your yeah. thoughts? What were your thoughts on where they landed with Garrett Crochet? Because the guy, I feel like we've talked about for like it feels like we've talked about a decade about this guy being the the White Sox, um, you know, either number two guy or ace in this particular case, if you want to say. But yeah, yeah what, what were your thoughts on on Grifo's announcement of Garrett Crochet being the the opening day starter for the Sox? Yeah, I, you know, I think I think it makes sense. I think it's, he's also a player that they are have the potential of building around. I think they're still trying to fill certain things out within this organization. Uh, he's had a pretty solid spring training for the most part. I think what, he's pitched four games. Uh, he started one of them. He's given up seven hits, um, no runs in nine innings pitch, 12 strikeouts. Um, I like it. I think it makes sense. Uh, you got now is the, now's the time you kind of let the young guys shine a little bit. So I, I think it's great. I think, I think he has very electric stuff. I think he's nasty from the left side. Um, good, good for the Sox and good for good for Garrett Crochet. It's, you know, hopefully, hopefully, you know this this is leading to some optimism for the White Sox future down the line. I hope. <laughs> yeah, no, right. Just a, a little bit of uh, 
you know, you gotta try to keep them as much optimism for the South Siders as you can, you know, yeah. uh, we'll, def we'll definitely, yeah. I'm, I'm excited to hear. We'll definitely have Gabe, Chris Pennon on some, one of these uh, episodes yeah. soon to, to talk about that side of things. Cause I'm definitely curious to see what they think. Uh, but yeah, I know like, and we, we saw, I mean, we, we've seen plenty of times what Garrett Crochet is able to do. I mean, he throws heat. Yeah. Uh, we saw him strike yeah. out Otani in spring training, a hundred, you know, 101 uh, miles an hour. So, uh, you know, it, it's cool. It's cool to see, uh, the whites, one of the younger guys kind of be healthy and now have the opportunity, you know, to, to make starts because, you know, he hasn't uh, in, in the big leagues, he has yet to start a game. I think a lot of people, you know, forget about that because we've talked about it so often of like, Oh, he's, you know, he's going to be a, a starter of the future for the Sox. This isn't that, you know, but this is a guy who has in three seasons, um, you know, uh, granted it's only been 72 appearances in those three years, but he has a 271 ERA. So he definitely, the, the, the potential is there. The talent is there. And then also he's, I believe he's only going to be, yeah, he's 24 right now. He's going to be 25. So he's still fairly young. And this is a guy that could easily solidify himself as the White Sox ace of the future and, 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 you know, to lead that rotation, um, and, and so on. So very exciting for the Sox. And you're right. That's one of the things I was thinking about, like for the Sox, like, that, and then in general, when you're when your team is not going in the right direction, they're going to lose. You know, they're going to lose is like at least everyone gets an opportunity. Right. Like the younger guys get an opportunity yeah. like, you know, in the city of Chicago, we're seeing that with the Blackhawks. We're like, you know, there's not much going on there. But every guy that, you know, the you know, they bring up, you know, guys from the AHL, they, they, everyone's getting opportunity. Yes. It's good to see because you kind of get a preview of the next few years and which guys are going to be there, which guys are not. You kind of see it from now. Yeah. Um, and to what, to what's going to unfold. So that's interesting on that end. Um, but yeah, I think well, also another thing too, is that I, I do like the fact that they kind of went in a different direction because like I said, they could have gone with like a Michael Kopech, for example, um, or they could have yeah. gone, you know, with a, with a veteran presence, like a Soroka or, or even a Fetty who, mm -hmm. you know, who's been in, in the KBO, but, but he's been in the big leagues before and all that. So um, interesting and definitely uh, excited to see what Garrett Crochet does in uh, 2024. Um, on the north side of Chicago, you know, the, the Cubs named Justin Steele, their opening day starter. Um, and, you know, it, it, Justin Steele actually tweeted out uh, talking about how um, it's two Mississippi left-handers, um, uh, you know, that are going to be making opening day starts for the, for the Cubs and the White Sox. So that's pretty cool to see there. Um, some injuries uh, have hit the Cubs, and that's Jamison Tyone. Uh, Patrick Wisdom as well. Those are guys that uh, might not be ready. I know Tyone doesn't look like he's going to be ready for opening day. Wisdom, I guess there's a slight concern there. Um, what are yeah, your thoughts on – what are you, yeah, what are your thoughts on the Justin Steele being announced? I mean, this is a no-brainer, obviously, but, like, how, how do you feel about him being the ace going into the season, as well as just some of the injuries and, and how it might impact? Because the thing is, um, it's not – obviously, you want everybody to be healthy. You want – you know, Tyone is a very important part of the rotation. But it, with yes. a guy like Wisdom not – possibly not making the opening day roster because of injury or something like that it opens the door for other guys. Um, uh, maybe not necessarily a Matt Shaw, but like down the line, who knows, right. The season. Uh, but like, uh, uh, how do you see those two things shaping out for 2024? It is a very, it is a very, in, in terms of Justin Steele, I think he's earned it. I, he's clearly the ace of this staff. Um, people can look at his spring training numbers and get kind of nervous, but at the same time, we can't. We got to take spring training with a with a grain of salt. Even and even what I mentioned that with with Crochet, um, he's earned it. He's the ace of the staff, and I and I cannot wait to kind of see him even grow grow more this year. Well, I'm, I look forward to seeing the progress and not seeing him regress. And so, I, I love Justin Steele. I cannot wait to see the dude throw this. Um, yeah, when it, when it comes to these injuries. The, the the Tyone seems like there's a little bit more optimism around that one in terms of a specific timetable. Um, with Tyone, it was amazing it's kind of seeing him turn it on later last year, uh, you know, really showing the elite pitcher that he can be. Now, when it comes to, to Pete Wizzy, it, this one does make me a little bit nervous just from what's being talked about, the information that's being shared, and uh, it's it's unfortunate. I, I really like Patrick Wisdom. I think he's always been a very – uh, heavy presence in the lineup, although, he, yes, he swings and misses a lot, uh, doesn't really hit for too much average, but I think he's a great presence in the lineup for, for any team. Um, but I think this does also open up opportunities, and, you know, it may not be a match all, but maybe we'll see someone like Dominic Smith get an opportunity, or Garrett Cooper, who, who who's really has not been a bad hitter the past two years. 
just had a few things to work on in Miami, like you talked about today during the spring training game. Um, there, there, there's some, there's some sleepers that we got going on here. We're a very deep organization, so it, it's unfortunate that that we're not gonna have Patrick Wisdom on, you know, the opening day roster. But like you said, it opens up opportunities for other guys. I would love to see either uh, Dominic Smith or or Garrett Cooper get opportunities. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. That's one of the guys. You know, those guys were brought. I, I think you know. Let me restart. Like those types of things. Uh, are you know why those guys are brought in in the first place i think a lot of people you know are always yeah. you know we're always quick to like be like garrett cooper like dominic smith like why you know like yeah, but but ultimately we know that like you know uh, you know depth is an important part and, and not to mention um with with the young team and and you know a team that's hoping to do something a guy like dominic smith a guy like garrett cooper can help a team uh definitely win so i think that's an, an important yeah. thing and i think uh to to realize and remember and you know with, with a guy like patrick wisdom as much as yeah, like the thing is, people are always quick to say Patrick Wisdom strikes out too much. This isn't that about Patrick Wisdom, but they never talk about the good yeah. things about Patrick Wisdom, right? It's like you have to remember that Patrick Wisdom is the type of guy that's important to a good team. Like even if he's not starting, like this is a guy that can hit a, hit a home run every single at bat. Like that's important, no matter yeah. what. I know he can strike out; he has a high strikeout rate. I understand, but at the end of the day, you're telling me that we line up out there in the wild card series, you know, a division series. And we, in it's a one run game in the ninth inning. And you, you know, you need a pinch hitter. If Patrick wisdom comes out of the plate, like he can tie the game. Like it's just, it's just, that's, that's exactly. I think that's how teams yeah. think about it. And that's how some fans yeah. are just like, Oh, like he's going to strike out. This isn't that, but it's like, we've already seen this guy hit 20 home runs more than once, more than twice. So it's like, it's definitely, uh, there's a reason he's on the team. There's a reason also like he brings the vibe, he brings the vibes too. That's also uh, very obvious when you see this guy, yeah. like always dancing. He's or, a like, dude. Bringing... He's definitely yeah, a dude. yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it, it, he's, he's awesome. And, and like, you just love to love to see a guy like that. And hopefully he does come back sooner rather than later. Um, like I said, I know yeah. that uh, Craig Council said that it was concerning, but hopefully um, him and, and Tyone are able to, you know, be back in April um, um, soon. But, yeah, I think and another thing, too, besides um, on the Dominic Smith part and, and Garrett Cooper, yeah, like there's plenty of guys out like on, you know, that will have the opportunity to play. You know, obviously, Christopher Morell is going to have an opportunity to start at third base. Um, uh, yeah. Obviously, you know, Matt, Master Boney, if he's able to make it, I know Nick Madrigal has had some some injury uh, stuff in spring training as well, but he'll obviously yeah. get an opportunity if things uh, turn out there. But yeah, it's just like I think the the Cubs definitely uh, made it a point in the offseason to add depth, and they definitely did that, you know. And and I think some of the younger guys too will give them opportunities. I think that's another reason too why they didn't add a guy like Matt Chapman, um, and they they you know they they uh, didn't add a lot of uh, you know star power when it comes to position players. Not that they will in the near future, but. They, I think they looked at it as if this is another year where the younger guys could give them, you know, add some depth and come up and, and, and do do their thing. Cause you know, guys like, you know, you see guys like David Bodie, um, you know, in, in the minors and, you know, I'm sure, I think this might've been, I think I heard too, where like, this might be his last spring with us. Like he might, the Cubs might uh, DFA him soon. And then, and then, you know, opens an opportunity because David Bodie's a guy that um, I know we're veering off and we're, I'm not trying to make this a David Bodie podcast, but as much as, you know, we've always uh, we've talked about him on here before, and and David Bodie, like his contract was a little puzzling when when they gave him the contract that they gave him and all that. He's a guy that deserves a spot in a big league roster, right? Like, is it, I don't know, you just see him, and he he definitely doesn't deserve to be in the minors. You know what I mean? Like, there's guys, um, right, yeah. Like, there's guys that are in lineups, and 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 again, I'm not trying to roast people like players, obviously in the big leagues, but like there's guys on rosters where you're like David Bodie could easily replace that guy or or be that. Like, I don't know give him an opportunity. So I definitely think that a guy like David Bodie, if it's not with the Cubs, cause it doesn't seem like it will be with the Cubs anytime soon, then he will definitely make an impact on another roster. But the, those are the type of, yeah. you know, roster decisions that people uh, definitely, uh, um, I feel like don't think about when they talk about like a guy like Patrick wisdom and, and injuries like that. Yeah. Um, but now uh, changing gears to a story off the field and, and that, that, you know, we definitely talked, you wanted to, you wanted to talk about this particular subject. And I mean, dude, it was huge news uh, when it happened, but Sammy Sosa returning to Chicago, he even sat down, had a couple interviews, but man, how about uh, uh, him coming in, you know, into O'Hare and one of the first things that he hears or someone asks him is, did you do steroids? Like that's, that's crazy that he hasn't been. That's why I wanted to talk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that pissed off so much. <laughs> And the thing is, like, the thing is, like, I under trust me. I, I'm I'm in the middle of this where, like, 
you know, uh, like I went to school for journalism. I understand where, where journalists come from. I, they want to get the scoop. They, you know, they got to make money, yes. but, but I do understand, so that's but you also, Montgomery and Roosevelt. yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, Montgomery, the go dude. So like, you have to like, you just have to, <laughs> You just have to like also read the room type of situation. Sometimes I think yeah. uh, journalists will also tell you that. Like it's this is not like a outsider looking in thing. But yeah, I'll give you the floor. Like talk about that and also just what have you thought? And and do you think because his comments he made, you know, saying that you know he uh, he's talked to the Ricketts and all that. Like do you like do you see? Are you optimistic of like this being resolved anytime soon? Because this is a guy that this is a guy that realistically deserves a statue at Wrigley, and is and yes. either either his number retired to like all that stuff. He deserves that for, for what it is. And he's even, by the way, another, one more thing too, is that yeah. a lot of people don't realize is that he's answered questions in court. Like he doesn't have to, he doesn't have to do this again, no, nor does he have to answer your questions. He's already done it in court. Yeah. Like the, the, the highest uh, degree of questioning that, you know, that you could do in, in, in this country. So yeah. Well, what were your thoughts on, on him arriving in Chicago and yeah. just kind of the, all the noise and, and, and are you optimistic that he'll resolve the situation with the Cubs? Soon? I, I am optimistic. I think, I think him coming out and even saying that is just huge in, in general. And it's mm-hmm. been 17 years since we've seen him uh, in Chicago and so I, I think, I think this would be so good for Cubs fans to see Sammy Sosa back at Wrigley Field for so many different reasons. He's gonna get he's gonna get such an amazing ovation when he goes there. He hasn't he hasn't seen Wrigley and all of its renovations and, and and how it's evolved over the years, but it's still that same Wrigley Field that we all know and love. I would love to see him honored for sure. Um, it's unfortunate that there you know that there are issues and and I, and I understood that. Uh, the, the the parting ways between him and the Cubs back in 2007, 2006 didn't exactly go the way that he, you know, wanted it to. Um, but it, it, this is this is something that I think would be great. That would not only be great for the, for the Chicago Cubs, I think it'd be great for baseball to have Slam and Sammy back at Wrigley Field to be honored correctly. This isn't someone who could just walk in there and they play like a little a little cute video of, no, this is, <laughs> man, I, I want a pregame ceremony. I want, this is, what, what what he did for baseball, uh, mm-hmm. it, it, it was just it was just incredible, and 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 yes, there there were, there were regardless of where people stand, I know where I stand on it. I'm a very I'm I'm Mister Don't Do That, um, but there like the, the entertainment factor of what what it was and what he did is just it's it's just something that I've always appreciated it is why so many of us grow up wanting to be like Sammy Sosa that's the mm-hmm. reason why some of us want to hit home runs and is millennials and it's just so I, I I'm hoping that this is something that is resolved very in the near future I I don't really want to see this drawn out and you know, I also am a pretty impatient person uh but I would love to I think it's time I think it's time I don't think there's any more there's any more you know reason to have this prolonged or, or anything we got to get Sammy back at Wrigley Field Cubs fans need to embrace him. He needs to embrace Cubs fans. He needs to be honored. Um, and yeah, that's uh, that's up to the Ricketts. It really is. Um, and, and I'm hoping that they're able to find some sort of some sort of resolution when it comes to this, and we can we can move forward and, and really embrace Sammy for everything that he's done for the Cubs. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't say it better myself. I mean, just look at you know what he did, like in Baseball Reference says it all but as a person way more and i think like you know just yeah. just i mean all you, like all you have to do to convince somebody what type of person Sammy Sosa was is just like the 911 you know where he came out with the flag and all that thing, you know onto the field and 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 all that and i think also i mean i've oh heard this from people yeah uh, and i've heard it from people too where like they wouldn't be cub fans the way they are now if it wasn't for Sammy Sosa some people even believe that the cubs w- would not be where they're at now uh in in the sense of media like when when it comes to the media if it wasn't for Sammy Sosa, right? The Cubs are always on ESPN. They're always, and I get it. The 2016 obviously is one of the big reasons were they, you know, that they're on it now, but even before yeah. then, that's just what some fans see. It. And I think that says a lot, just people saying it, even if it's not true, like just people saying that and what they believe it, what Sammy Sosa meant to the, the, you know, to the city and to the team, it, it says a whole lot yeah. speaks for itself. And I think, and, and trust me, I, I understand where you're coming from with when it, when the whole, with the whole steroids thing and, you know, some people uh, chalk it up to, you know, what, not that it makes it right either, uh, but mo- a lot of people were doing it at the time. A lot of people uh, were, were dabbling in steroids and all right, that. Yeah. So, they, and, and again, I like, reiterate, like, I'm not saying that 
to, to make it right either. But um, it kind of feel like it gives them a little bit of a leeway because of the sense that like a lot of the players were doing it. So if a lot of those players are in the Hall of Fame or getting yeah. Hall of Fame, whatever, then like then he should also, you know, get some kind of uh, a recognition on that sense. But it, it is definitely an interesting it is, a you know, just another subject that I feel like we could talk hours on end on just because like it leads to so yeah. many areas. But it's good to see Sammy, Sammy doing all right. Sammy being in Chicago. Um, I know he even had a sit down, you know, a 20 minute conversation um uh with reporters in spanish too so that was cool to see as well um and hopefully yeah it does get resolved sooner rather than later because i mean it's just it's been too long that he's even been at wrigley and it's a different ownership uh it's it's way different yeah. now um it's and different. if he does come yeah. yeah exactly so if, if he did come back it'd probably uh, be like a whole party like just like as you say it'll it'll definitely be a party so um hopefully that happens sometime soon that game will be um, spelled out whatever game is that <laughs> Hell yeah, no Don't doubt. Don't just Brandon Sammy. Let us know when you're <laughs> coming. We're going to throw you the best party ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Dude, slam, the slam, slamming Sammy party will be uh, one for the – one for yeah. the ages for sure when he does it. So, yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, moving on to the rest of the league, there's been plenty of news as, as I mentioned uh, at the beginning of the show. Uh, Blake Snell will start there. Um, you know, he signed a contract, a two year contract with the Giants. Now, you know, everyone and everyone was saying too, like, you know, keep and they kept saying, you know, Scott Boris, they're you know, his clients are not getting, you know, what they want. Is it his fault? <laughs> Whatever. This isn't that. Um, but point being, the fact is he's getting a two year deal. Definitely not getting uh, all the money that he wanted. I mean, think about it. A lot of people were talking about uh, Blake Snell getting, you know, a $200, $300 million contract. He gets a two-year $62 million contract with the Giants. But uh, what was your reaction of him going to the Giants? I mean, this is a team that has had trouble getting um, uh, free agents. They have Matt Chapman. They have Blake Snell now. Uh, and yeah, what was your reaction overall when you heard about this deal? Cause it was a little surprising that it was a giants, but at the end of the day, yeah. anybody could have gotten him uh, for that price. I, you know what? I think, I think it's a great move by the giants. And I think that they are slowly coming together as an organization. I think that they're actually a very solid team now. Um, now, do I feel like they are going to overpower anyone specifically? No, but I do believe they have a pretty good one, two punch now in the rotation. Mm -hmm with Blake Snell there. And so when you, when you kind of look at this giants team as, as a whole, you can definitely, you can definitely look at how they're starting to sort of gel. They, they know the division that they're in. They know that they cannot be the bottom of the barrel because it is more than likely that the Dodgers are going to run away with this division. Um, so it is, I, I think it's great. Um, and, and in terms of Blake Snell, just in general, um, I, I, to me, is this, it's, excuse my language, it's kind of bullshit that, that it took this long mm. because, because we're, we're asking for money that we're, I say this respectfully, we don't deserve. And, and, and it's just like, okay, well, I'm just going to sit here in the corner until someone gives me what I want. No, it, 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 and I might be going in a whole different direction, but I, and I don't think this is really talked about a lot. There's a lot of money being thrown around in baseball, which is creating a lot of greed. Um, and you see, you know, you're having issues right now with the, with the MLBPA and everything. And my whole thing right now is that if, 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 if clearly the, the market is telling you something, and I guess maybe I'm talking to Scott Boris specifically, if the market is, is, is telling you no, and is, and, and is not budging. Eventually I, I feel like you have to do what's best for your, best for your clients. Now, if, if it comes to the clients, if they, if they are still demanding X, Y, and Z amount, Bro, at what point are you are you are you gonna like suck up your pride? Oh no, sixty million dollars! I feel so bad for him. He's gonna do, yeah. What is he gonna do now? Oh God, how is he gonna survive? I just do. It's just when it comes to the money talk in, in in baseball to me sometimes it's just there's so much greed and and I just we 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 are missing out right now on so many great players. Um, well, we were missing out on so many great players because of the, the whole financial part of baseball. Jordan Montgomery, apparently, what, he wants like seven years, 200 million. You're, you're telling me that you're not okay with, at the least, if a team gave you like, I don't know, four years, 90 million, four years, 100. Are you kidding? Two, at, at, at a certain point, it's not even about like how much you want. This is just an ego. It's an ego mm -hmm. battle. 
And that's my that's where I get frustrated with baseball at the moment because these guys are so talented. I don't want the money to 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 kind of just determine how we view these players. Like Shohei Otani got seven hundred million; it's well earned, but he's 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 still Shohei Otani at the end of the day. He's a he's a great, incredible ball player that did get paid a lot. Um, so yeah, I, I get it though. Everyone wants to get paid, but you know, I, I, at some point we we got we got to just suck our pride up and play ball because they will get yeah. paid. So they're gonna be fine. <laughs> no no yeah uh, I, trust me I, I know that there's definitely i'm sure there are players that are like would, i won't settle for for this or whatever I, I won't won't deny it i'm sure uh there's some cases like that um in this case i feel like a lot of it has to do with scott boris too though i feel like scott boris definitely i'm sure. sure yeah like scott boris is the one that like maybe you know uh to to what some people are talking about is kind of like leaving his players up to like you know to dry kind of thing you know it's where like they you know were okay with a certain deal uh, maybe like two months ago and then Boris was like, no way we can get more. And then they ended up getting less um, is a situation that people, people believe yeah. is how it unfolds. Um, so yeah, I know that that's, it's crazy to me, but yeah, like realistically speaking, like 62 mil is definitely enough for anybody. Um, and, and definitely a, a steal for the giants from that, from that case. And, and yeah, it's two year yeah. deal, but I mean, this is a guy that could have two great years again and then go out in the market and get a bigger deal depending on where the market is. But you brought up a good point, right, too, yeah. with ML- MLBPA and the, and the way things are going, too. And, and, and yeah. you know, uh, that's definitely, as it's still unfolding a lot, we don't know. And, and I'm definitely interested to see where that goes because Absolutely. if somebody from the MLBPA ha- had something to do with some of these deals, uh, you know, not ha- being as, as hefty as people thought they would be, that that next CBA is gonna get nasty, and it, we've already seen nasty CBA battles, right? I mean, we we don't have to remind people about the 2020 and, and the lockout and other other years with lockouts. Yeah. It's just we, fans don't deserve that, and 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 unfortunately, I feel like every every time that happens in baseball, there's gonna be a lockout again. We've seen plenty of lockouts in general um overall so um uh, but i did before we go i did want to touch on another uh subject that's making the rounds and it's you know breaking news basically at this point just like hours ago um that uh shohei otani's um um, interpreter uh ipe uh has been fired from the dodgers uh surrounding uh you know the you know uh, accusations of theft uh, of at least four point five million dollars, uh, we you know with with wire transfers from Otani's bank, uh, to a bookmarking operation set off, um, you know, like ex- excuse me, I'm, I'm like reading as as I see it, um, uh, tra- wire transfers from Otani's bank, uh, to for gambling purposes, and I think that's that. First of all, mind boggling. Like, still so, still trying to wrap my head around this whole thing because again, the details are barely yeah. coming out. Um, right. but what, what like some people are talking about, man, if is Otani like you know, hopefully not. I mean, geez, like if Otani is involved in this some way, because some people are like saying, oh, what if he is involved in it? This isn't that. W- what are your thoughts on this whole situation and like what it could mean for Otani? Because it, there is a part of the contract yeah. that does say if his if his interpreter is fired, um, he could uh the, the you know the contract uh he could leave the contract at the end of the season. Um, and now it looks like that's possible. So uh, what are your thoughts on this whole situation as, as of course, it is still developing? Well, that'd be crazy if Shohei decided to leave the Dodgers. I'm, yeah, <laughs> I know. Dodgers fans would be like, yeah, <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude, like, yeah. Dude, the Dodger fans are, are ready to, to build him a whole house. They're going to make a building. The Shohei building. Yep. Just going to leave after year. It's crazy. Dude, this is nuts. Mm-hmm. And like it has the potential of being like like really really bad. Like it has, mm-hmm. it, it has that potential, but it, it, it could be really bad, or it's kind of like okay, so I didn't do anything. This is all eBay's fault, you know, whatever. But like if, if there's something where it, it where it involves Shohei in terms of you know being you know, I, dude, I, I can't even like talk right now. Just like the thought of <laughs> Shohei just doing anything yeah. wrong. It's yeah. not really like something my brain can comprehend. Mm-hmm. That would be such big news. Not even not even just for baseball, but in like all of sports. Cause then it turns into a legal battle and then mm-hmm. yeah, dude, oh my God. Oh my God. So <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's, that eBay would be is kinda like so he's like this personality and, and eBay yeah. is kinda like part of that personality. And then we, we all recognize who eBay is and, and and so it's 
dude, I don't even know if I have like a full opinion on it yet. For me, it's <laughs> like right now I want to wait and see how this kind of develops, um, and then we'll see what happens from there. But but if Shohei is like affiliated with any, oh my god, oh my god, yeah, no, that it, oh it would it, it would be like. I mean, travesty is not enough. I feel like to even like describe that, but I'm just as baseball uh, sweetheart. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm, I'm just hoping that that. Yeah, I'm hoping that that is completely not true. I hope this gets settled, um, in in a, in a minor fashion. Um, but no, yes. yeah, that, that's that's crazy. But you know, we'll we'll talk about it next episode for sure when we get more details uh, of what you know. Because like I said, there's many assumptions that people are making. Like you know, uh, you know whether it be you know he's you know that Ipe had a gambling addiction. Oh, Tani helped him and like with paying off blah 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 this and so many rumors and and all this stuff going off. But point point of the story is that Ipe well, is fired uh, <laughs> from the Dodgers. Yeah. So. Um, we'll definitely get to the bottom of it next episode. Hopefully, if there's more details that come out. But well, the last thing we'll close off with is the is the positive news uh, from the last 24 hours. Of course, Soul Series kicked off. Uh, the first of two games uh, kicked off on the 20th. Pod or uh, the uh, the Dodgers came out winners, uh, five to two. Uh, what did you think about the first game? What did you think about the atmosphere? Because man, I will say this too. The one thing I was thinking about as a first pitch was was about to happen was like really how cool the KBO is not only that the stadium how awesome it is but also yeah. like it kind of it kind of like there was a little bit of nostalgia there because of the fact that um you know what people I think people forget that the KBO was was there for us in a time where we needed something to watch and to, to cheer for during the pandemic right like the the, yeah. the like during quarantine like and, and and uh i'm sure not everybody did this i'm we we're, we're i mean i'm me i count you in this too like we're just baseball freaks so like you know so yeah. but there were 4 a.m. start times where i was watching the lg twins take on you know the dinos like it's just it there was so many like so many cool things that reminded me of of during that time the the quarantine and all that that i got to see you know yeah. kbo stars and all that and uh, that was the cool part of it, but uh, what did you, what have you liked about th- this series of what we've seen so far? Of course, just one game, but uh, what what this type of series can mean uh, not only to the to Korea, not only to abroad, but also to baseball overall. It's huge. Hey, people people forget that baseball is such a world game. Um, it, it's you know I, I thought it was just a very just in general, just a very solid opening to this to this season and. Um, it was cool seeing, you know, Otani get his get his first, you know, RBI. He had a two for for today. Betts had a two for as well. Um, <laughs> of course, Mookie gets a stolen base with the catcher with the interference. The umpire gets out the way. Why are you that close to me? God, man, freaking weirdos, man. <laughs> um, Glasnow, I think had a had a pretty had a pretty solid start, and but you know, for the most part, I think. The Padres did a good job of really working him for the most part. He wasn't he, he wasn't overpowering everyone. Uh, he had three Ks. He walked for, um, but it's just you know there there's it was a great first game. I like that it wasn't lopsided. I, I like that you know we had some we had some late game heroics. That's just that's just what you know playing playing at this level does. And so uh, it's a great showcase for the game. And you know I, I look forward to watching the highlights of game two because I, I will be at the office tomorrow. And as much as I love to wake up and watch it, it's, just, it's not, it's not realistic. It's not a good thing for me to do. So <laughs> I, I, I love it though. And, and, and of course you have, this is almost kind of like the perfect storm of these two teams playing and who's on these teams. And so, you know, I just, yeah, I, I, I think it's great. Yeah. hundred percent, man. I'm uh, right on there. Kim play, come back home as well. Oh yeah. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like they had pictures of they showed him when he was really little, like you know, playing soccer and all this. It was it's pretty cool and the ovation he got and 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 seeing him on all these yeah. posters and all that is pretty cool. But yeah, you, you know, like I I definitely don't blame anyone. You know, like that is not unable to watch the game. Like, dude, it's just uh, he being in the Central Time, five a.m. It's a little gross. Um, I, like I said, I was fortunate enough. I was fortunate enough to not work today, so I I was able to to sleep after the game and all that. But if I was uh, off, yes, yeah, 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 like yeah, I, I trust. You, I I get you, and I think even even like I mean, I work. I'm working on Thursday, so I I don't think I'll be able to to stay up for that game. Uh, but um, either way, it's it's cool. It, it's great for the game, and I think it's awesome the fact that they're trying to do, go to the other other countries 
trying to continue to play in London. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, I believe next year they they said they're going to Japan. Is is the rumor they're going to Japan? And I think even uh, Eduardo Perez was talking about it on the telecast that the Dodgers, of course, the, the the Dodgers have to be the team to go there again because of the fact you know they have Otani, um, and, and Yamamoto. Yeah. And then he mentioned who uh, could be the other team that they face. And yes, sir, he said the Chicago Cubs it would be another team to watch out for. And it makes sense because they're taking another step. Yeah. They're going to have a lot of talent this year coming out for the minors or, you know, whatever. But that's, you know, yeah. not, you know, not, not, that's, you know, not enough to, if that's not enough to convince you, just the fact they have Imanaga, obviously, and Seiya Suzuki, uh, I'm sure will yeah. bring fans uh, in, in, into the stands in Japan. It'll be awesome. So uh, definitely something to look forward to if that does happen. Uh, um, we'll see what happens, but um, I think that's a good place to wrap things up for this edition of the At Bad Podcast presented by War Media. Uh, as always, want to thank my co-host Miles Porter, uh, and as always, check out all our other coverage of all the other sports like the Bears Den, where we're going to talk about Justin Fields getting traded, possibly drafted Kate Woo! Williams, all that. It's 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 getting hot in Chicago sports, man, in every way, shape, or form. So definitely check us out and on all social medias as well. Uh, Miles Porter, Sal Rodriguez. Hopefully everyone has a great week and we'll see you next time.